Hello everyone, I'm Ron Zaire. I am here today with somebody who's been very important for my personal history and also has made a very significant contribution to RBC Life. He is my father and RBC Life pioneer, Dr. Albert Zaire. Hi Dad, I'll just call you Dad instead of Dr. Zaire. And this is what I call him, not what you all can call him. Um, so Dad, let's start with how did you first get started with nutrition and wellness? Well, I guess the first motivation actually goes way back to the early years. I was, uh, I was born in the uh, late 1930s in a small uh, rural Amish Mennonite community, and our caregiver and our midwife was Aunt Barbara, great Aunt Barbara. Okay. And uh, she had hot mustard plasters, goose grease, and herbs, and all those things, and somehow we did just fine. But uh, after she passed away, at the beginning of the 40s, uh, my family moved to another community, and my mother discovered that we were way out of touch, and there was doctors and medicine, and we needed to go the, hmm. the up-to-date way, and so I got a sore throat, and they took me to the doctor, and he said, you need your tonsils out, and uh, from then on, uh, mom almost felt embarrassed that she had kept us in the dark ages, hmm. but uh, something stuck inside me, and I... Uh, Later on, it began to resurface. So maybe that wasn't just all old-fashioned. And so you started to remember that, and your curiosity came back. And then if we fast-forward quite a few years later... Yes, and by that time, you came along. I was there. And uh, your sisters, and we had a young family. And I used to ask myself, well, did Aunt Barbara really, maybe they were hmm. onto some things? And uh, then especially, I got the sense that you know, our body is really supposed to be self-healing, and uh, it, it, it's meant to be well, and maybe a lot of what we're doing is bypassing the natural health-enhancing function of the body, and that's when I began to study, and uh, for my research, actually for my doctors, I did a study on the old folk home remedies of different cultures to see now that we know the biochemistry of the body, maybe there was something there hmm. that uh, we that actually wasn't just uh, superstition. And that really impressed me and uh, moved me into getting involved full-time in health and nutrition. And so I remember in those early years, uh, you would often say that uh, the body was meant to be well, and you can still say it, I'm sure, way better than I can, but and it's doing everything that it can to maintain and regain wellness. Uh, I was a little uh, maybe harsh. I went so far as to say that most of what we call health care is really just disease management. And health care, actually, is to help the body help itself to maintain its health and even to regain it. Uh, we're supposed to, in a sense, be self-healing. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's frustrations that come in, and if we deal with those, the body will restore and recover. But if we ignore those and just begin to intervene with medication and drugs and so on, then uh, we begin to go down another route. And certainly that other route really also affects natural health care because people are often asking the question, what do I take for what? Mm -hmm. Well, I always say that when uh, people say to me, for instance, they say, well, I, I inherited that. My daddy had that. My grandpa had this and that. And I say, well, you may inherit weak areas in your body and in your body's function, but that doesn't mean you inherit the, a problem or the disease. That means that if your immune system is overloaded and your body is toxic and you don't have good nutrition, that's the areas that will begin to suffer and show up first. So the, the um, medical approach, you might say, is to try to get those symptoms to, uh, to shut up and be quiet. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that we can uh, no longer have to face the symptoms. But the symptoms are telling us there's a problem, and that's what we want to deal with in, in prevention, particularly in cleansing and so on. So, Dad, talk about the motivation for Colavada Plus, because it's a product that has really stood the test of time. What needs did you see? What was happening that you said, you thought, this is, there's a real need for something like this? Well, I guess it goes down to one simple uh, 
fact, and that is anything works better when it's clean. Mm -hmm. And uh, I began to get involved with uh, studying a lot of the health pioneers, we mm -hmm. called them in the 60s and 70s, like Bernard Jensen and Norman Walker and uh, Salem Kurban and different ones, and they really focused in on what they called colon cleansing. Mm. They said good health begins in, the, in, in a healthy bowel. And if you are toxic, especially if your, your bowel is sluggish or has accumulated lots of mucus and, and, uh, and crustman and so on, you cannot be healthy. Mm. So I studied all of them and I became very convinced it's very critical. But I felt like each one focused in on one particular area as though it were all inclusive. Mm. And I thought, let's, let's look at the whole body cleansing function. Okay. And that's how the Kulavada was born um, and encompasses and three phases, not just getting rid of your clean, cleaning your colon. Okay. So share with us about those three phases, because I, I think that's really important. That's why it's called Kulavada Plus. Plus, right? yes. That, okay. The plus was always an important part of it. Yeah. So first of all, I said to myself, if you're going to clean the sink drain, you want to first clean the sink. So, uh, in that sense of that analogy, I use the first phase, which is uh, seven days, and it includes two pouches of uh, tablets and so on, to be taken one morning and one evening. And that, in a sense, draws and brings the toxicity, the heavy metals, the pollution, and even giving the liver an activation, because the liver, of course, collects a lot of the... Um, uh, heavy metals and the uh, problems in your blood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get that all down into the colon.